Hi guys, I made it back home and today we have to talk about something absolutely insane. There is a player in the market planning to sell 30,000 Bitcoin and that will definitely have a massive, massive impact on the price. I'm going to tell you in this episode who this player actually is because we know that and if he's actually going to sell on the open market and the impact that this selling pressure would actually have. If you think that that is interesting, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, like this video and also activate the bell so that you will never miss out on these really important updates. And now let's get started here. So I don't want to torture you too long with who the actual seller is in the market, potentially the big seller. It could have been also that they just moved these coins for security reasons, because it's, it's let's, let's be honest, it's a shit ton of coins, you know? We don't know, but there is a, basically a hint that they are potentially planning to sell all of it. So, and the reason why we have to be cautious about this is because it's the US government. The US government is potentially selling 30,100 uh, 30, Bitcoin. Zach XBT was tracking the wallet or is tracking the wallet. Um, these coins are or originating from the Silk Road hack. And yeah, since uh, the US government has recouped these coins, they're sitting on it. Now, why is this so important for us? Because 30,000 Bitcoin is too much to, for the market to absorb it. It would crash Bitcoin most likely back under $50,000 if they would decide to liquidate all of it in one go. Do I believe that this is going to happen? Definitely not. The US government is not stupid. They want to make as much as a profit like everybody else um, in that casino. They are most likely replacing Grayscale. And because Grayscale, take this now with a grain of salt, Gray, um, there are rumors that Grayscale themselves has said that by the end of this week, they are stopping to sell their Bitcoin uh, holdings for their clients, I want to leave Grayscale because they're running out of it. Again, take it with a grain of salt. I have not found any confirmed information about it. So for now, it's just a rumor. But what could happen is that then the US government jumps in and said, hey, perfect. You know, so Grayscale was selling like a thousand to five thousand Bitcoins a day. We can also do that for a week. You know, we do this for a week and then, then we're out. Then we have sold everything and the average price would be $60,000. Not too bad for sitting so long on these coins. So this is something that we should keep in mind. So, and they have, yes, they done a test transaction to a Coinbase deposit address. Now, the f here's something that we don't know. We don't know if they're going to sell all of these coins on the open market, or if they're actually going to feed the ETF providers with these coins, and that would be OTC. Ah, no, sorry, this is not OTC. They, they have to buy on the open market. So, but there is, sorry, I have to correct myself. But there is the possibility the US government is going to sell these coins OTC via Coinbase through their OTC desk or directly to the ETF providers, which anyway have to buy them off the open market and only can do that on a, on a US platform. So there are different options where this is not looking too bad for us and we are getting a big, big, big player off the chessboard that could later dump on us as long as they are choosing one of the first two options, either that they, are, they let the ETF buy us everything or uh, they sell it OTC and the third option, they do a mix out of it and not putting one single coin on the open market. If they start dumping this on the open market, then of course everything is going to change and we're going to talk about this now when we are going here into the charts. So for now, let's start off here with the CME chart because here's something that I still don't really like what's actually happening here and that is that we almost closed the CME gap but only almost. We went to $64,800 on the CME chart but the gap is only considered to be closed if we go to $64,200. So there is a potential that we are just rolling over here and doing something like this. And it would be not the first time that we see something like this, where we get a massive move to the downside, we are getting a small bounce, and then we do something like this. I don't want to see that, but um, we have 
to consider this for the time being, even though everything is pointing to a short-term bounce over the next, let's say, five to seven days before we might get another bigger correction here. Now, when we go to um, the enormous um, perpetual chart here, the one hourly chart here, we can see that our support area down here from 64400 to $65,200 has perfectly held as support, which was prior here resistance, and here was just a fake out with a deviation, and then here again resistance, and then we flipped it into support here, but got never retested. Now we basically retested this. This is short term a bullish sign that this support has held, because even though if we get now a move and a deviation under this level to basically fill the CME gap, I believe we come straight back up and continue then the uptrend. So for now, Bitcoin is trapped here in this range of 65200 to $67,800. But once we are leaving this range and we're breaking it to the upside, Bitcoin will go and make a new all-time high. So don't be mistaken here. So once we're flipping this again into support, Bitcoin will come up and uh, run to new all-time highs. So I'm really sorry, guys. I have not had time to prepare a lot of charts here because I basically just came through the door um, and I have to live with what was basically here on, on my computer before I left. Uh, something else that I want to point out here is that up here, the $69,200 area remains also a key level to reclaim. But first of all, as I just said, we need to retake 67,000, uh, sorry, $68,400 is the top range on this chart here. So once we are reclaiming this, the next level would be 69,200. And that is our top resistance area right now. Once we are flipping this level here, a new autumn high is basically imminent. Now the question is, how long are we going to range in this area here before we're actually going to see that? Honestly, it could coincide with um, the, the halving that we are ranging just before the halving, you know, so uh, or let me put it this way, that we range for another four or five days and then the last and then the last 10 days of the halving, we see a seven, eight day run into the halving and then we get again our pre-halving correction, uh, sorry, our post-halving correction, which could result in Bitcoin again ranging in an area so this is now just for um, uh, visual purposes. Uh, and once Bitcoin is starting to range here, altcoins is going to explode to the upside. Now, when we are going to the <laughs> liquidation levels, here we, we have yesterday cleaned quite a lot here to the downside. We have here some over leveraged positions with some um, low leverage positions here mixed up between 63,500 to 64,400 in that area. So and I believe that we have potentially to come down here to clean that to clean this out, and only from there we are going to see a full move back to the upside. Can we see that before already? Yes, we can technically uh, to see something like this. But Bitcoin is not showing a lot of strength in my opinion right now. Yes, we got here the short-term bounce. Yes, we got here a nice uh, bidding war where uh, we push directly straight back up when we came back into this area here. Um, but I want to see follow through, you know? So I would like to see that Bitcoin goes in the next 24 hours back to $68,200 and find support above there. Then we basically had a V-shaped recovery and an inverse head and shoulders and continue the upwards trend. If this is not happening, then most likely we could see some more consolidation, but we rolling over slowly and potentially mm, come then down here. Again, don't want to see that. Trading-wise, where are we right now? Kind of no man's land. So Bitcoin is something that I would not touch right now unless you want to load up on your long-term holdings. Um, otherwise, it's a, it's a big no-no to touch Bitcoin uh, for me, uh, leverage-wise. If you were able to catch it down here, good. But um, here in this area, I, I would not open a long position. So where I would open a long position is if if we would get it with a one hourly close, actually I would open at $67,300, but I would close it again at $69,200. Why would I do that? Because here in that area is an imbalance. 
this imbalance has to be cleaned to balance out the order book again. So this normally happens quite quickly after the imbalance was created. This is not remaining for a long time. Um, up here, more or less like the CME gaps. So now, what is not a long time? So it can take a couple of days uh, to to be fair here, yes? So, But sooner or later, we are coming and cleaning this. So, and again, where does this bring us? It brings us really close to all the liquidity here and short liquidation sitting up here. So once we're tapping into this the next time, you're going to see Bitcoin taking off like a rocket ship into a new all-time high. Now when we're looking at funding rates, funding is completely reset here across the board. Um, so which tells us we can slowly start longing some altcoins, but slowly, again, remember, I, I believe that there is a risk that we, are, uh, that we have not fully bottomed out yet. That's why I'm still a little bit cautious here, you know? So let the imbalance get filled, because that could be also a bull trap that we fill the imbalance. People think, oh, we're going up now, and then basically just reverse lower and create another lower high because we had here a higher high. Now here, this whole area is considered a lower high. And now imagine we fill the imbalance and we only come up here to the imbalance, something like this and roll over again. Then here, would another, uh, there would be another lower high. And then once we are creating a lower low, then the uptrend structure would be broken. And we would technically be in a downtrend then. So, and that's why I'm telling you, be careful. Be careful right now. You know, let's see what's happening here around um, $69,000 when the imbalance is filled. And from there, um, I would start looking at altcoins again. Um, at least if you want to use high leverage, something like 10, 20x, I would not um, use anything higher than uh, anything as high as uh, 10x right now if you want to open some uh, long positions that you want to um, basically swing hold. Concentrated liquidity is still sitting above us. There's a little bit also right now above us, but not much. So we could see a push today to like 67 to take this out. Um, but again, that is not uh, what will get us here um, out of the mud. What we want to see is a move here to 69 into this gap here where right now nothing is and see create uh, Bitcoin creating a short squeeze from this area here into $72,000, That is what we want to see. Again, technically, the direction here, liquidity-wise, is still to the upside because we have cleaned everything here um, on, on, the, on the lower end. You know, even if I go to the monthly, you see, so here, that's, that's what I mean. You know, so we can go as low as 63 but most likely there we are turning around and pushing it to the upside all the way up to like 74, 400, 75, 200, something like that. Because the concentration of the liquidity is to the upside to take out all the shorts there. When we're going then to Velo data, I want to see how the bits are looking. So actually, uh, oh no, this is CVD. <clears throat> I just want to say here, uh, cumulative returns, you know, that would have been not... That would have been looked really, really good if that would be here, the spot bits. So but what I have to say is that at least Bybit and OKX, seeing here slowly bits coming back. Uh, yeah, that the bits are coming back. Let's see here on the, on the daily how we are looking here. Here, yeah. So Bybit is definitely looking the most bullish one here right now when it comes to buying pressure. Um, OKX, still not really convincing. And Binance... Also, not making an uptick yet. Uh, I want to see that definitely be um, changed. That we see a nice uptick to the upside. Uh, because other otherwise, uh, like I said, we are most likely to go a little bit lower before before it gets better. When we are looking here at the um, EM, uh, EMAs, the EMAs, not the EMA ribbon. So what, what we could observe here was that we actually here got a golden cross but now it looks like that the golden cross was a fake out unless Bitcoin comes back to $67,500 above uh, the 50 moving average and then above the, the 200 moving average, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, sorry, above the 200 moving average, then above the 50 moving average and continues its upwards trajectory. If this turns out to be a, a death cross later on, this will be really bad for Bitcoin because uh, then I, I think we, we are going to see sub $60,000 for Bitcoin in the imminent short term. And guys, don't forget, if you still want to trade in this volatile market, then use Bybit for that. You still get $30,000 if you used 
uh, the specific link here down below. And if you want to trade altcoins with me together uh, on a degenerate level, then go to Margex. Uh, the strategy is called AM Crypto Altcoins. Um, also, only with that link below here. And if you cannot use BitGet or, uh, uh, sorry, Bybit, then you can use uh, BitGet or Femex. The links are also uh, down below here. On Femex, you get $8,800 uh, still, uh, yeah, to win a chance, $8,800 and potentially 9,000 Pulse tokens. Mm -hmm. And if you just want to traditionally copy trade me with the highest bonus in the industry, $120,000, then um, go to Fairdesk. There you can copy trade me with uh, the link below here. All these links are in the comment below or in the description of my video, guys. So and just that you see here that I'm fully transparent on uh, Margex. I have a 5x leverage trade right now on Solana. Um, I kind of long the top here. I, I'm going to admit what it is, you know, so uh, before... Uh, we start breaking down. Uh, the liquidation price is at $160. So unless Bitcoin is not going to sub $60,000, I don't think that I will get liquidated here. So, and I'm, um, yeah, I'm basically, how much? I'm like 5% away. Yeah, 5% 5, 5 away from break even. Uh, so it's not that crazy, you know? So I want to be here fully transparent that I also have sometimes trades that are running here into a loss, you know? So not meaning that, this will close in a loss. You know, I let it run because I believe that this will turn a profit. Um, but just that you see that I have also sometimes trades, even for a long time, running before they're actually turning a profit. I have one trade open, you know, so on Binance. Um, it's right now five figures in the red, and I'm having this one open for over a month already, you know, but I'm keeping it because once Bitcoin is turning around and the altcoin starting to run like crazy, this will result in a six-figure profit for me. That's why I, I keep these trades open. So you need to know what your strategy is when, when you are trading. And as long as nobody else is understanding what your strategy is, they can also not comment, you know, um, about it. If uh, something like, oh, you're, uh, you're in a loss, you're losing, blah, 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 you know. So um, it, it doesn't make sense if you don't understand how, how, um, how this person is actually trading. So now something else I wanted to show you guys is the USTT dominance. The USTT dominance was yesterday pumping like crazy and the day before also. And that's why we saw the correction in Bitcoin. In the dominance, a small correction back to the downside. Hence why altcoins and Bitcoin are going slightly up again. So what you want to see is here a big red candle to the downside, which means uh, people going from USTT back into crypto and um, not holding their stable coins. USDT dominance coming up here to 4.72%. And only from there gets rejected and goes lower. So the good thing is overall, we are still in a downwards trend here on the dominance. That's, and that has not changed yet, even though we have here a potential bottoming formation. But this will be only confirmed if the dominance can break here above 4.8%. So as long as that is not happening, we can still bank on the fact that this should go lower, which would bring more relief um, dollar-wise to all our assets. Now, when it comes to the Bitcoin dominance, the Bitcoin dominance is also dropping here a little bit. But again, nothing crazy here. I still wait for this upward sloping trend line to be broken here to the downside. Uh, but this can take here until after the halving before this is actually happening. So I don't focus too much on the dominance right now, to, to be honest. Uh, the total market cap, the total market cap is still here in a good level. But also here, I would like to see that we come back at least to $2.4 trillion uh, to stay here in that resistance area. Actually, this here I can... So I want to see by the end of the week that we are closing here in that resistance area because that would mean po a potential flip of it and potentially even outside, closing outside of it so that we get $0.12 trillion again added to the total market cap to be here above that resistance area because then we go into new all-time high um, in terms of total market cap. Ethereum has also a really weak structure from what I'm seeing right now. We tried to break here $3,356 and failed for the time being. Um, and why is this so bad? Because if we start losing here $3,250, we're losing here this whole volume traded area that's anyway already acting as a resistance. But if we drop out of it, then we go back to $2,950 approximately and see a bounce from there. 
So you should be prepared for that. If Bitcoin goes lower, Ethereum will go lower. If Bitcoin turns around, then most likely Ethereum will come back at least to $3,500 to the point of control that we actually lost and retested as resistance um, over here to confirm that loss and then started to go lower. So you want to see a reclaim of that. And again, most likely this is going to result into an in inverse head and shoulders if that is happening, which should send us then also higher for Ethereum. Guys, that's already for today's episode. I know it was quite long, but I still hope that you enjoyed it. So please make sure that you smash up the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you then again tomorrow.